Hello and welcome to the starting Necron series where we go from your first purchase to your first 2000 point army list and everything in between for the Necron army. In this video we'll take a look at making your first Necron purchase and how to get the most out of your money while also picking up units that allow you to expand into more efficient lists as well as what to avoid early on. Before we start I'd like to say that the Necrons have a certain level of nostalgia for me as they were the first models I bought over a decade ago when I first got into the game. I remember painting my first Necron Warriors with the three paints I owned at the time, and while I don't own those models anymore, I'll put up a dramatic recreation on screen. Now to contrast it with my painting skill today, I'll put up the Scorpic Destroyer I painted for the title card, which I was very experimental with using schemes I've never tried before. I had a lot of fun painting the Scorpic Destroyer, and it was a model that was surprisingly easy to paint, though I really do dislike the push fit models, as they're a rather big pain to put together in my opinion. To start off, in terms of what's a good purchase, in most armies that have one, a starter box is probably the best value you can find, and we'll quickly see why. And while the Necrons do have a star collecting box, it is rather old and hard to find, so I won't really focus on it too much, but if you can find one at a good price, it's definitely a decent pickup, although some of the models within it haven't aged as well as some of the new options, so keep that in mind when you're picking it up. Even though there isn't one specific star collecting box anymore, there are actually three different boxes that can function as a star collecting kit for the Necron army army that also include models from a different army so you do have to kind of pick up some models you might not want but we'll quickly see that the fact is that even though you're getting models you don't want the boxes are still a better deal than buying the individual kits by themselves. Let's look at the three different choices and how they compare to buying units individually as such. To better understand this phenomenon we'll look at these three boxes from lowest price to highest price starting with their recruit edition box. To best understand why this box is a good deal we should first look at what Necron warriors themselves cost. If you purchase 10 Necron warriors that come with three scare you'll pay a total of $45 on the Games Workshop web store. While the Recruit Edition will cost you $50 on the Games Workshop store and comes with the same unit of Necron Warriors as well as the Scarabs, however, in addition to those units, for an extra $5, you get a Royal Warden model, which isn't too impressive compared to a lot of the Necron models or even the Necron Warriors, but it's a model you get that will have some value. In addition to that Royal Warden, you pick up 5 Assault Intercessors and a box of 10 Assault Intercessors for the the Space Marines goes for $60 on the Games Workshop store, so you're essentially getting $30 worth of units when you're getting those 5 Assault Intercessors. Additionally, you get a single Primaris Lieutenant, which is at minimum $5, though if you look at what characters cost on the Games Workshop store, it's usually north of $20, but I'm being very conservative in this case in terms of price. So the value you get for a cost of $50 is at minimum $85 if you bought every unit individually, and you get a bunch of models for only $5 than you would by buying the basic Warrior Kit, and realistically, you can either keep the marines to start your own little marine army or sell them to a friend at a significant discount to reduce the cost of this box by a significant amount getting it lower than you would pay for a single box of necron warriors while getting a royal warden for free after the recruit edition box we come to the second box which is the mid-tier box and that is the elite edition box much like the Recruit Edition box, the Elite Edition box can be compared to two different kits of the Necron line. Those kits being the Necron Warriors, which we've already established is a $45 box, and in addition to that, the Scorpic Destroyer kit, which is a $55 kit. Now if you combine the prices of those two individual kits, you'll see that it comes out to a total of $100. However, the Elite Edition kit costs you only a total of $99, so already you're saving $1 while getting both the Necron Warrior kit and the Scorpic Destroyer kit within that box. However, you get a lot of bonus models that you're essentially getting for free by buying this instead of those two kits. The first model you get is an HQ choice, which is the Necron Overlord. And while the Overlord isn't the best HQ choice, he's definitely an okay starter HQ choice, and if you buy him individually, he'll cost you a total of $25 at the very least on the Games Workshop website website, so it's a really good savings to get him in this case. You might also be able to proxy him in some cases for other HQ choices if you're so inclined. In addition, you get the previously mentioned Primaris Captain and 5 Assault Intercessors, which we valued at a total of $35, although that's a very conservative price point in terms of what you would get on the Games Workshop store. However, in terms of what you would get online, that might be a little aggressive. And to wrap up what you get, you will get a unit of 3 Space Marine Outriders, and if you bought those off the Games Workshop web store by themselves, they would cost you a total of $60. So right away you're paying $99 to get a total value of $220 if you bought everything individually off of the game 
Games Workshop store, and that's a rather crazy savings to be looking at. And finally, there's a third start collecting kit, which is called the Command Edition. And the thing about the Command Edition is, unlike the other two boxes, where there is a certain level of difference of the models you get within the boxes, the Command Edition is the same models as you find within the Elite Edition. However, it will cost you $165 instead of $99. And the reason being is that you get a soft cover rulebook as well as some terrain pieces, which is a nice extra bonus. But really, unless you're looking to get that terrain or that rulebook, you really don't want to buy this one over the Elite Edition, whereas the Elite Edition you'll probably buy over the Recruit Edition. So keep that in mind. To compare all these boxes, the Elite Edition is by far the best value, as the Overlord is a much better HQ choice than the Royal Warden, and the Scorpic Destroyers are a rather nice model as well. More so, if you find a friend who plays Marines or wants to own some, you can make them rather happy by selling the Marine units for a huge discount and saving yourself even more money. As we've seen, the starter boxes cost as much as just a couple of kits individually, so when you sell these Marine units, you're essentially getting a free discount. In many cases, you'll get the cost drastically down. I should also mention that you get some free stuff in these boxes as well, such as a few paper maps as well as some dice, which is a nice extra bonus, although it's nothing to really think about too much. As such, it doesn't really make sense to buy Necron Warriors or Scorpic Destroyers as individual sets due to how much they cost in comparison to any of these boxes. As we've seen, the two kits together cost more than the Elite Starter Box alone, which gives you an additional 10 models when you purchase it, so why would you really ever buy those two kits by themselves? That being said, in many cases you'll want a lot of Necron Warriors, as often times Necrons run several units of 20 warriors, in which case you can buy the starter boxes and keep or sell all of the marines, or you can go online and buy things like the warriors and destroyers off of sites like eBay for as low as $25 for the warriors with scarabs or even the destroyers, because plenty of people buy those kits for certain units and sell the rest online for way less due to the price of individual warrior boxes and destroyer boxes making no sense. One thing to watch out for though is that some people will sell the warriors without the scarabs, However, even though you'll save a little money by not buying the Scarabs, the Scarab Swarms are actually a rather good unit, so you definitely want to buy them when you purchase the Warriors, otherwise you're going to have to go back and try to find them individually, which can end up costing you more in the long run. So make it easier for yourself and just buy the Warriors with the Scarabs if you're buying it off of third party resellers. Outside of the starter kits, there are some units you can buy early on as they're rather efficient and can see play within different armies over time. The first of these kits is the Cryptex, which are probably the best Necron HQ choices outside of large heavy characters. There are a total of four different kinds, and while each one in theory has their own model, they can be rather mix and match to some extent, but the ones you really want are the Chronomancer and the Technomancer if you have to choose. The role these guys serve is to buff other units while being reasonably cost to themselves, so oftentimes they find a place in most armies as a good overall support unit that fills an HQ slot, and that's a perfectly fine use of an HQ choice. For the bulk of the army, you can buy plenty of warriors. As mentioned before, many lists will run multiple units of Necron warriors, with some combination of squads of 20 and squads of 10 to optimize their buffs and abilities, so picking up plenty of warriors and scarabs isn't bad at all. However, if you want to play a more aggressive army, there is a build that forgoes the warriors and goes straight for the Scorpic Destroyers and Canoptic Wraiths, running multiple units of each alongside Scarab Swarms, Canoptic Spiders, and Cryptex. All of those units can be played within an army that features plenty of Necron Warriors as well, so they're not bad choices as good units go. And as such, you can pick some of these up and see how you feel before you commit to them, as you can always end up running them in a different list that's more Necron Warrior heavy, or you can continue on the path of going towards that more Assault style list where you've picked up lots of Scorpic Destroyers and Canoptic Wraiths, as well as a good amount of Scarab Swarms and a couple of Canoptic Spiders. Now that we know what we should buy, let's look at what we should avoid. The first thing I'll put on this list isn't something you should never buy, but rather something you shouldn't until you have at least 1000 points of other units. The reason being that all of these eat up a ton of points and wouldn't really work in smaller games. Units such as the Silent King come in at 450 points, which is unplayable in 500 point games for example, and the Silent King is rather difficult to justify at 1000 points either. Other units that fall in this category will be the Catan Shards as a whole, where something like the Nightbringer can be an absolute powerhouse, but each Catan Shard still eats up 350 points and the Nightbringer eats up a total of 370 points. They might be more viable at 1000 points, though even then you're still eating up 35-37% to 37 of your army. If you're okay with doing that, then more power to you, as they're definitely incredibly strong units, but you'll find that sometimes having more models on the table early on is better better than having one really good model, especially against better players who can really take advantage of your lack of units on the table. Though once you start buying units for a 2000 point army list, the Silent King and the Nightbringer specifically are definitely models you should consider. Though the other Catan Shards aren't bad either and might have some place, they're much rarer, and something like the Monolith is probably not very good as it doesn't stack up very well against something like a Catan Shard or a Silent
Silent King. So usually try to avoid some of the big structures and focus more on the Silent King and the Catan shards, especially the Nightbringer, when you're taking one of these units in a higher point game. One model I would avoid as a whole would be the Reanimator. This model actually recently received a major points decrease, but it still doesn't seem particularly great, as while it has a strong ability, it doesn't have the best stats, while also being a massive target that your opponent can easily take out before its ability even matters. The biggest problem is this model is the Cryptech Technomancer has a similar ability while benefiting from the Lookout Sir ability that this model just doesn't have, and due to the size of the reanimator, it's usually going to be a sitting duck on the field. Maybe you'll see some love now that it's a rather inexpensive unit, but it definitely needs a lot of protection while also competing with the Technomancer that's easier to protect, or the Ghost Arc, which just has a better stat line overall, so I don't really see a place where the reanimator fits within the army even at its reduced point cost, though that might change and hopefully it does because it is a cool model. I would also avoid the Ophidian Destroyers, as they aren't bad, but the Canoptic Wraiths and the Scorpic Destroyers definitely outshine them as units right now, and as such, there just isn't much incentive to take an Ophidian Destroyer over one of those other two options. I guess you can argue that it's a cool looking model and you want to run it because of that, though we're not really looking at aesthetics in this video as much as we're looking at efficiency, and unfortunately the Ophidian Destroyers just aren't that efficient in this case. One last model I'm not too enthusiastic about is the Hexmark Destroyer, which is rather sad because the Hexmark Destroyer is a very pretty model. It could have some potential, but it's a unit that has a rather short range and is a single character. And while the types of shots it offers aren't necessarily bad, they're not exactly amazing. So this unit isn't going to be a powerhouse in itself, and the fact that it's a single unit makes it really awkward. Though if they do change it in the future, so you can take the Hexmark Destroyers within a squad, say a unit of three at least, then it would definitely make the unit a lot better than it is now. But as it stands, this unit is just a bit too awkward to fill an important role. Again, it's really cool looking, and if you really want to try it, give it a shot. But I think you'll find that it's a little too difficult to use. Additionally, you'll probably find that the shots don't do as much as you want them to, even though it has a total of six shots, which is kind of nice. I really want this unit to be good because of how cool it looks, but I just don't see it right now. However, as a whole, if you think something is cool and you want to try it, don't be afraid to give it a shot, as this list is simply a recommendation in terms of efficiency, and things can always change, as Games Workshop has made the game a lot more dynamic and is constantly working on tweaking rules to improve different models or to address balance issues. Not only that, but even without changes, sometimes people find creative uses for units that surprise all of us, so even though I didn't mention many units on here, you'll definitely see them randomly pop up with an army list that do well within tournaments. There's always going to be some place for someone to figure out something to do with some of these units. In some cases though, there are going to be units that are much harder to take advantage of simply because their profile isn't very good. But even then, in other armies, I've seen people do some incredibly creative stuff with units I thought would never be viable. Anyway, this is the end of the video. If you've enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe as it does help the channel. And as always, thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.